Book 10 The Book of the Double Twilight Canto 2 The Gospel of Death and Vanity of the Ideal Then pealed the calm, inexorable voice, abolishing hope. Cancelling life's golden truths, Fatal its accents smote the trembling air. That lovely world swam thin and frail, Most like some pearly, evanescent farewell gleam On the faint verge of dusk in moonless eve. Prisoner of nature, many visioned spirit, thoughts creature in the ideal's realm enjoying thy unsubstantial immortality, the subtle marvelous mind of man has feigned. This is the world from which thy yearnings came. When it would build eternity from the dust, man's thought paints images, illusion rounds. Prophesying glories it shall never see, it labours delicately among its dreams. Behold this fleeing of light-tasseled shapes, aerial raiment of unbodied gods, a rapture of things that never can be born, hope, chance to hope, a bright immortal choir, cloud satisfies cloud, phantom to longing phantom leans sweetly, sweetly is clasped or sweetly chased. This is the stuff from which the ideal is formed. Its builder is thought, its base the heart's desire, but nothing real answers to their call. The ideal dwells not in heaven nor on the earth, a bright delirium of man's ardour of hope, drunk with the wine of its own fantasy. It is a brilliant shadow's dreamy trail. Thy vision's error builds the azure skies. Thy vision's error drew the rainbow's arch. Thy mortal longing made for thee a soul. This angel in thy body thou callst love, who shapes his wings from thy emotion's hues. In a ferment of thy body has been born, and with the body that housed it, it must die. It is a passion of thy yearning self, it is flesh that calls to flesh to serve its lust. It is thy mind that seeks an answering mind and dreams a while that it has found its mate. It is thy life that asks a human prop to uphold its weakness lonely in the world or feeds its hunger on another's life. A beast of prey that 
pauses in its prowl. It crouches under a bush in splendid flower to seize a heart and body for its food. This beast thou dreamst immortal and a god. O oh, human mind, vainly thou torturest an hour's delight to stretch through infinity's long void and fill its formless, passionless gulfs, persuading the insensible abyss to lend eternity to perishing things, and tricks the fragile movements of thy heart with thy spirit's faint of immortality. All here emerges, born from nothingness, encircled it lasts, by the emptiness of space, a while upheld by an unknowing force, then crumbles back into its parent naught. Only the mute alone can forever be. In the alone there is no room for love, in vain to clothe love's perishable mud thou hast woven on the immortal's borrowed loom the ideal's gorgeous and unfading robe. The ideal never yet was real made, imprisoned in form, that glory cannot live. Into a body shut, it breathes no more. Intangible, remote, forever pure, a sovereign of its own brilliant void, unwillingly it descends to earthly air to inhabit a white temple in man's heart, in his heart it shines, rejected by his life. Immutable, bodiless, beautiful, grand and dumb, immobile on its shining throne it sits, dumb it receives his offering and his prayer. It has no voice to answer to his call, no feet that move, no hands to take his gifts. Aerial statue of the nude idea, virgin conception of a bodiless god. Its light stirs man the thinker to create an earthly semblance of diviner things. Its hued reflection falls upon man's act. His institutions are its cenotaphs. He signs his dead conventions with its name. His virtues don the ideal's skyey robe and a nimbus of the outline of its face. He hides their littleness with the divine name. Yet insufficient is the bright pretense to screen their indigent and earthy make. Earth only is there, and not some heavenly source. 
If heavens there are, they are veiled in their own light. If a truth eternal somewhere reigns unknown, it burns in a tremendous void of God. For truth shines far from the falsehoods of the world. How can the heavens come down to unhappy earth or the eternal lodge in drifting time? How shall the ideal tread earth's dolorous soil where life is only a labor and a hope, a child of matter, and by matter fed, a fire flaming low in nature's great, a wave that breaks upon a shore in time, a journey's toilsome trudge with death for goal. The avatars have lived and died in vain, Vain was the sage's thought, the prophet's voice. In vain is seen the shining upward way. Earth lies unchanged beneath the circling sun. She loves her fall, and no omnipotence her mortal imperfections can erase, force on man's crooked ignorance, heaven's straight line, or colonize a world of death with gods. O oh, traveller in the chariot of the sun, high priestess, in thy holy fancy shrine, who with a magic ritual in earth's house worshipest ideal and eternal love. What is this love thy thought has deified, this sacred legend and immortal myth? It is a conscious yearning of thy flesh. It is a glorious burning of thy nerves, a rose of dream splendor petaling thy mind, a great red rapture and torture of thy heart. A sudden transfiguration of thy days, it passes, and the world is as before. A ravishing edge of sweetness and of pain, a thrill in its yearning makes it seem divine, a golden bridge across the roar of the years, a chord tying thee to eternity. And yet how brief and frail, how soon is spent this treasure wasted by the gods on man, this happy closeness as of soul to soul, this honey of the body's companionship, this heightened joy, this ecstasy in the veins, this strange illumination of the sense. If Satyavan had lived, love would have died. But Satyavan is dead, and love shall live a little while in thy sad breast until his face and body fade on memory's wall, where other bodies, other faces come. When love breaks suddenly into the life, at first man steps 
into a world of the sun. In his passion he feels his heavenly element, but only a fine sunlit patch of earth the marvellous aspect took of heaven's outburst. The snake is there, and the worm in the heart of the rose. A word, a moment's act, can slay the god. Precarious is his immortality. He has a thousand ways to suffer and die. Love cannot live by heavenly food alone. Only on sap of earth can it survive. For thy passion was a sensual want refined, a hunger of the body and the heart. Thy want can tire and cease, or turn elsewhere. Or love may meet a dire and pitiless end by bitter treason, or wrath with cruel wounds separate, or thy unsatisfied will to others depart when first love's joy lies stripped and slain. A dull indifference replaces fire, or an endearing habit imitates love. An outward and uneasy union lasts, or the routine of a life's compromise, where once the seed of oneness had been cast into a semblance of spiritual ground by a divine adventure of heavenly powers to strive, constant associates without joy, Two egos straining in a single leash, two minds divided by their jarring thoughts, two spirits disjoined, forever separate. Thus is the ideal falsified in man's world, trivial or sombre, Disillusion comes, life's harsh reality stares at the soul. Heaven's hour adjourned flees into bodiless time. Death saves thee from this, and save Satyavan. He now is safe, delivered from himself. He travels to silence and felicity. Call him not back to the treacheries of earth and the poor, petty life of animal man. In my vast, tranquil spaces, let him sleep in harmony with the mighty hush of death, where love lies slumbering on the breast of peace. And thou go back alone to thy frail world, chastise thy heart with knowledge, unhood, to see thy nature raised into clear living heights, the heaven birds view from unimagined peaks. For when thou givest thy spirit to a dream, soon hard necessity will smite thee away. Purest delight began, and it must end. Thou too shalt know 
Thy heart no anchor swinging, Thy cradled soul moored in eternal seas. Vain are the cycles of thy brilliant mind. Renounce, forgetting joy and hope and tears, Thy passionate nature, in the bosom profound of a happy nothingness and wordless calm delivered into my mysterious rest. One with my fathomless nihil all forget. Forget thy fruitless spirit's waste of force. Forget the weary circle of thy birth. Forget the joy and the struggle and the pain. The vague spiritual quest which first began when words broke forth like clusters of fire flowers and great burning thoughts voyaged through the sky of mind, and time and its eons crawled across the vasts, and souls emerged into mortality.